it's week five on Wegovy. <laughs> and uh, we're going to do some food prep together today. I'm also going to go through some recipes with you. This week we're making Amish breakfast casserole. We're doing tomato basil soup, some Greek sheep pan chicken, and then finally we're going to do some beef tips with gravy. Mm. Uh, anyway, all the recipes are going to be down in the description. If you're interested in a detailed calorie and macro breakdown of everything I ate this week, I will have a link to my fitness towel profile where you can see everything in my food diary. Or if you're just interested in the recipes that we're cooking today, you can head over to my Instagram and I'll have all that information there. Anyway, I upload cooking and weight loss results videos every week. So if any of these recipes sound good to you, go ahead and hit the like button for that YouTube algorithm. Smash the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my content. Anyway, I hope you like the video. Let's get cooking. So we're gonna start my Amish breakfast casserole. I'm just gonna half the recipe because it makes a nine by 13 and it's just for me, so that's way too much. I uh, just need some cottage cheese, an onion, three eggs, some bacon, some hash browns, and then um, I'm using some extra sharp cheddar cheese and mozzarella. The recipe called for like Swiss and cheddar or something like that, but I already had these half blocks that I needed to use up, so that's what I'm gonna do. Let's do this. So I actually learned this trick from Julie Pacheco. You just take a folded up piece of paper towel and wipe it around the pan and it soaks up all the grease for you. It works really good. You should definitely give it a shot. I decided that this needed an extra egg. I probably could have added two or three more to be honest, but I was glad that I at least added one extra. I'm just gonna try this Amish breakfast casserole, which I'll know what I think because I've never tried it before. So I was a little worried it would be under seasoned because there wasn't any salt and pepper or anything like that. And it is pretty bland. Um, it's real potato heavy. And that could have been my fault because I didn't weigh the potatoes like I was going to. So if I make this, well, I probably will make this again because it was just so easy. I'll probably cut the amount of potatoes in half and add some other kind of vegetables in here, like mushrooms or maybe some kale. I'm not a big fan of cooked spinach. It gets slimy, but kale has a really, really good texture when it's cooked. Um, so maybe some kale and mushrooms 
and I'll probably add some other flavorings other than just onion. Um, the bacon is good in there. I don't have as much really as the recipe called for, but I'm good with it. Um, and it's got a lot of cheese, uh, like an unnecessary amount of cheese, I feel like. So I'm gonna tweak this recipe a little bit more, but it's definitely worth trying because um, <clears throat> it's just so easy. And even with all of the cheese and all the potatoes and everything else, it's still less than 300 calories per serving, which is pretty darn good. So I hope you give it a try. All right, so we're gonna get started on our Instant Pot tomato basil soup. I'm gonna be eating this for lunch all week because this sounds warm and comforting and happy. So we're gonna use some chicken broth, a little bit of butter, whole milk. The recipe calls for 2%, but I have room for extra calories and whole milk is delicious. Uh, we've got some onion, carrots, and celery, some Pecorino Romano cheese, San Marzano tomatoes with basil. This is a rind of a Parmigiano Reggiano um, block. Always save these, they are fantastic to flavor soups. It doesn't really add any more calories, it's just, it adds a lot of flavor. You just throw it in there and let it cook. Um, we're gonna use a little bit of flour to thicken things up. Um, kosher salt, thyme, recipe calls for fresh, meh. Bay leaves, some fresh basil, salt, or excuse me, pepper, and some avocado oil. So let's get to cooking. I have no idea why my cutting board was sliding around so much. These actually have like a tacky coating on the bottom, these cutting boards do. So they don't usually slide around that much, but if you ever have an issue with your cutting board sliding around, you can put a damp tea towel underneath them and it'll keep them from sliding around. It's really not safe to cut like that. It's easier to cut yourself. not looking to get any color on these veggies we're really just sweating them when you add the flour make sure you cook it for about 30 to 60 seconds just to get that flour flavor out and turn off the saute function so that you don't evaporate all your liquid add just a little bit of broth and use that to deglaze the bottom of the pan I call this mix and chop the tool I never knew I always needed <laughs> I always thought these things were so silly until I got one. They're fantastic for breaking up meat, but I really love to use them for shredding cooked meats, breaking up veggies like these tomatoes here. If you don't have one, they're definitely worth the purchase. You're gonna see me fishing out this Parmesan rind. You definitely don't wanna saute that in the soup. Make sure you get rid of it just like the bay leaves. jamming out in the kitchen to some NSYNC. <laughs> I look ridiculous. So 
after tasting this, I decided it needed some more seasoning. I ended up adding garlic powder, white pepper, cayenne for a little bit of heat, and it was much, much better after. This wasn't a recipe, I just threw together this grilled cheese. Instead of slathering butter all over the bread, I just went ahead and wiped the butter around the pan a little bit. Once I got the bread in there, I went ahead and turned it around a little bit to get it all coated. When it came time to flip it, I pulled it out of the pan, wiped a little bit more butter, and then flipped it onto the butter and smeared it, you know, swirled it around again. It worked fantastic. I definitely recommend giving it a shot. guys so I'm gonna try this uh soup this soup the tomato basil soup it's hot mm. it was real good I had to add some seasonings but it was pretty darn delicious my little grilled cheese it's the only way to eat grilled cheese dip it in there mmm Really good. You really don't notice the difference between that and slathering the butter on the outside and using 10 times as much. You still have the flavor of the butter from putting it in the pan, but I use less than a teaspoon. So there you go. I hope you guys give this one a try. It was really good. All right. So for our sheet pan Greek chicken and veggie bake, we've got some salt and pepper, dill, paprika, oregano, basil, chicken breast. Some grape tomatoes, zucchini, lemon, red onion, garlic, feta cheese, white wine vinegar, oil, and some feta cheese stuffed olives. Let's get it done. Just a little hack for you guys, if you end up getting a lemon or a lime that's not the juiciest, just pop it in the microwave for about 15 to 20 seconds and it makes a world of difference. chicken got some chicken and some rice and some vegetables mm -hmm. it's very briny from the olives but it's good it's really yummy good flavor try it out 
All right, we're gonna make some beef tips and gravy tonight. We're just gonna use some chuck roast that I'm gonna cut up, mushrooms, some onion, brown gravy mix. I always get the less sodium because those things are chock full of sodium. Calls for beef broth. I use beef broth, but rarely, so I have this bouillon. This thing is a monstrosity. I got it at Sam's Club by accident because it was only $4, so I didn't think there was any way it would be that big. This is my hand. It's huge. Anyway, some garlic powder, calls for garlic salt. There's already plenty of salt in here. Uh, Worcestershire, sure, sure. We call it wash your sister sauce here. This is black pepper and some salt. Let's do this. Um, so I'm deviating from the recipe a little bit because this recipe says to brown this roast. Here's the thing, I'm not gonna, because, oh, but Mindy, what about the flavor? I don't think that it really adds that much flavor. There's already so much going in here between the brown gravy mix and the garlic and the beef broth and all the things, it's gonna be just fine. Oops, that's not delicious, don't eat that. So the smaller you cut these pieces, the more tender they're gonna be. I just cut these into long strips. And of course, here comes the cover. And not browning it means I don't need to use the oil. So, yay calorie savings. I did end up regretting not browning this meat, not because it lacked flavor, but because the beef ended up boiling in the sauce. So it left those gray floaty things in the broth. So if I had to do it again, I would definitely brown it first. Hello, my love. Apparently I forgot to record a reaction to this one. <laughs> we ended up serving it over skinny mashed potatoes and it was actually really good other than like I said the floating gray thingies. Make sure you read the directions carefully because I ended up adding too much broth to it but it was still delicious. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and let me know down in the comments which recipe you're excited to try. If you're interested in seeing how much weight I lost this week, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know as soon as my results video goes up later this week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.